Now let's see question two. Uh. Figure above shows the use of a transistor in a circuit. Uh, from here we can see that in this circuit we have a transistor here, and then we have a bulb here, and then there is a battery here, and then there are two resistor here, okay, plus another resistor here. Now these two resistor act as potential divider. Uh, so this potential divider uh, will share this eight volts according to their resistance. Okay, the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage across the resistor. Okay, uh, usually this circuit is used to control the voltage across the base, uh, the base circuit, and hence control the collector circuit. Eh? So we use the potential divider to control the base circuit. The transistor is switched on when the base voltage greater than two volt. Okay, so. So according to the information given here, if the voltage across the base, uh, across the base means it's from the base to the emitter, okay? If the voltage across the base and the emitter greater than 2 volts, then the currents can flow in the collector circuit. If it's less than 2 volts, then the currents can only flow in base circuit, but there's no currents in collector circuit. If you still remember, the collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit eh? okay if there is current flow in the base circuit there's a current flow in the collector circuit uh, the question tells us that if the uh, potential difference across the base m equal to two or more than two then uh, the current can flow in the collector circuit so calculate the minimum values of r2 so that the transistor can be switched on uh, so what it means is that uh, resistors of this r2 so that uh, the the voltage across the base is two volt. Uh, just now I told you that these two resistors share this eight volt, right? Okay, according to the resistance. Yeah? According to the resistance, <clears throat> the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage. Yeah? So now let's see. Okay, we have eight volt, and then it's shared by R one and R two, right? And the question says that okay. Uh, when this R2 equals to 2 volt, okay, then uh, the, the currents uh, in the collector circuit will start to flow. Okay. So, uh, so R2 must be at least 2 volt, uh, minimum 2 volt, uh, so that uh, the collector circuit will start functions. If R2 is 2 volt, then, uh, or, or the potential difference across R2 is 2 volt, then what is the potential difference across R1? It should be. 6 volt, right? Okay, because these two resistors act as potential dividers to share this 8 volt. So if this, this one is 2 volt, okay, okay, so this one must be 6 volt uh, because this, uh, this 8 volt is shared by these two resistors. So now we know that if this is 2 volt and this is 6 volt, okay. From here we can see that uh, 12 kilo ohm, uh, 12 kilo ohm. Is equivalent to six volt. Then how many kilo ohm? Oh, let me write here. Okay, how many kilo ohm? Then you can get two volt. It's equivalent to two volt. So what do you think? Uh, Twelve kilo ohm, you get six volt. So how many kilo ohms you are going to get two volt? The answer is four kilo ohm. Huh? Four kilo ohm, you will get two volt. Why? Because 12 kilo ohm you get 6 volt right means that every 4 kilo ohm you can get 2 volt right 4 kilo ohm 2 volt 4 kilo ohm 2 volt 4 kilo ohm 2 volt right okay so totally 12 kilo ohm 12 kilo ohm you get 6 volt so that that's what does it mean by uh that's what uh what what it mean by is a potential divider the share the potential difference according to the resistance the higher the resistance, the higher the potential difference. 4 ohm, 2 volt. 8 ohm, 4 volt. 12 ohm, uh, 6 volt. 16 ohm, 16 ohm then is uh, 8 volt. So uh, you can solve this problem by using uh, this method, okay, potential divider. But uh, usually for most of the students, uh, it, this is uh, too abstract for them. Eh? The concept of potential divider is uh, too abstract for them. So uh, later on, I will introduce another method, okay? Another method, which is uh, much easier. Now, let's see the alternative ways to solve these problems, okay? Now, if 
you encounter these uh, problems where they would like you to find uh, the potential difference across these two resistors. These two, remember, these two resistors act as the potential divider. Okay, so we have a cell here, and then there are two resistors here. Okay, if they ask you to find the potential difference across these two resistors, okay, what can you do is you assume that uh, all the circuit elements here does not exist. It's like that you can erase all the circuit elements here. It's like so there's no circuit elements here to make it a simple uh, series circuit. So we assume that uh, all the circuit elements at the center here does not exist. Okay, so then this can be reduced to uh, two resistors series circuit, right? And from the questions, we know that the R2 must be uh, the potential difference, okay? The potential VR2 must be equal to at least 2 volt eh? so that the current in the collector circuits can flow. If uh, the potential difference across R2 is equal to 2 volts, therefore the potential difference across R1, eh? VR1 must be 6 volt, right? Because these two resistors will share this 8 volt. Eh? Okay? If this one gets 2 volt, this must get 6 volt. Now, after we know the potential difference across R1, and we also know the resistance of R1, uh, then we can find the current, okay? We can find the currents. So the current I equal to V over R, and V is 6 volt, and uh, R is uh, 12,000, uh, 12,000 ohm. Therefore, the current is uh, 0 0.0005 ampere, okay? So the current is, uh, 0 0.0005 ampere. Now, in series circuits, the currents will be the same at any points of the circuit, right? Here, 0 0.0005 ampere. Here, 0 0.0005 ampere. Here, also 0 0.0005 ampere. And here, also 0 0.0005 ampere. Okay, so means that the currents that flow through R2 is also 0 0.0005 ampere okay now you see we know the voltage across r2 and we know the currents that flow through r2 then we can find the resistance right so the resistance uh, from v equals to ir okay? so the resistance r equals to uh, v over i uh, v is 2 volt and uh, i is equal to uh, 0 0.0005 ampere and uh, by using your calculators, you should get the answer. Uh, this is equal to 4,000 4, ohm. Okay, 4,000 ohm is uh, equal to 4 kilo ohm. So you see, we get the same answer. Uh, so just now, we learned that, okay, if this is 2 volt, then the potential difference, or oh, sorry, the resistance must be 4 kilo ohm. Okay, so... Uh, by using the alternative methods, we, we also get the same answer, 4 kilo ohm. So that's how we solve the problem. Sir. You can uh, directly use the potential divider if you really understand potential dividers. Okay, 8 volt shared by these two resistor. Okay, so 6 volt, 12 kilo ohm. Therefore, four, uh, 2 volt, it must be 4 kilo ohm. Okay, if you really understand that, you can straight away tell the answer. But if you can't understand that this is a concept of potential dividers, uh, then you, you can apply the second method. Sir. So the second method, we assume that all the circuit elements uh, in the middles of the circuit here does, does not exist. So we reduce this into a two-resistor series circuit. And uh, from then we solve this two-resistor series circuit. First, we find the current. Okay, After we find the current, then we can find the resistance across the second resistor. Uh, then we get the answer. Make sure that you, you know how to solve this problem because... Uh, this is one of the famous questions in this chapter. So it come up quite frequently in the exam or test. Question 2B. The resistor R2, okay, this is R2, okay. R2 is then replaced by a light-dependent resistor, okay. Light-dependence uh, resistor, we call it LDR. So LDR, light-dependent resistor. Explain whether the bulb will light up under sunlight. Okay, now. 
to solve this problem, first uh, first of all, you need to know what is LDR. What is LDR? Now, LDR is the resistor where the resistance will change according to the magnitude or intensities of the light. Uh, if the surrounding is bright, okay, for a, for an LDR, okay, if the surrounding is bright, the resistance will be very low. Uh, let's say it's about five hundred ohm, okay, five hundred ohm. But if the surrounding is dark, there's no light, okay, then the resistance will be very high. It can be uh, uh, a few million ohm, okay. Let's say it's a uh, ten million ohm. 10 million ohm that is LDR okay the resistance change according to the intensities of the light if R2 R2 is replaced by an LDR okay so this is a symbol for LDR okay a resistor with a two arrow okay two arrow this is a symbol for LDR okay so uh, then they say under sunlight under sunlight means it's bright, eh? it's bright. So if uh, under sunlight is bright, then the resistance, the resistance will be very low. Okay, let's say the resistance become 500 ohm. If it's 500 ohm, then what is the potential difference? What's the potential difference across it? Okay, now this one is 12 kilo ohm. Okay, this one is 12 kilo ohm. This one is 500 ohm, okay? So, if this is 500 ohm and this is 12 kilo ohm, and then these two resistor is share this 8 volt, right? Because this resistor, now this one, the resistor is so low, so the share that it get, the share that it get will be very, very low. Maybe just approximately, maybe just a 0 0.1 volt only it get. And this 12 kilo ohm will get a very big share. It, will, it may get 7.9 volt. So in this case, uh, the no currents will flow in the collector circuit, okay? Why? Because just now we learned that this one must be at least 2 volt, eh? at least 2 volt, then only the current can flow in the uh, collector circuit, or or the resistance must be at least uh, 4,000 4, 4, ohm, right? Okay, okay, let's check. Okay, yes, it's 4,000 ohm, 4 kilo ohm. So the, the potential, sorry, the resistance for this resistor must be at least 4, thousand ohm then only currents can flow through the collector circuit okay so this one only 500 ohm 500 ohm means currents cannot flow through the collector circuit if the currents cannot flow through the collector circuits then the bulb will not light up how do we write our answer okay because the questions would like us to explain okay to explain so not only we uh, we tell that the bulb will not light up, we must explain why the bulb will not light up. Let's erase this first. The very first thing that we need to tell is when the LDR, the light dependent, dependent resistor exposed to sunlight Its resistance will be lower than 4,000 ohm. So second, we need to tell that as a result, uh, no current will flow in the collector circuit. Because the collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit, and we learned that uh, the resistance of R2 must be at least 4000 ohm, then only currents can flow in the collector circuit. Okay, But if the LDR exposed to sunlight, uh, the resistance will be just a few hundred ohm, so it will be lower than 4000 ohm, and therefore uh, no current flow in the collector circuit. Uh, 3, therefore. will not like that. So this that is how we present our answer. Eh? To be two, besides being used as a switch, state one other use of a transistor. Okay, I think this should be no problems, right? So what do you all think? 
transistor can also be used as a current amplifier, right? So there are two uses of transistor as a current amplifier and uh, as automatic switch. Question 2C, state the functions of resistor R3 in the circuit. Now, in the circuit, we can see that there is a resistor called R3. Okay, so what's the functions of this uh, resistor R3? To answer these questions, uh, the very first thing that you need to know is the relationship between the base currents, the currents in the base, uh, the base current, and the collector currents. We, we have learned that, okay, the collector currents, okay, is always higher than the base current. For example, if the base current is uh, 0 0.1 ampere, then the collector currents may be, uh, let's say, uh, 5 ampere, okay? If the base current is 0 0.2 ampere, then this will become 10 ampere. So that is uh, how it works. And if this is 1 ampere, then this becomes 50 ampere. Now, 50 ampere is considered very, very high current. Eh? So that's the relationship between IB and IC. Now, just now we learned that if the potential difference across R2 is 2 volt, then the base current here will be big enough uh, to cause the, the current in the collector circuits to flow. Eh? Okay. Then how about if this voltage increase to, let's say, uh, 6 volt? So if the potential difference here increases to 6 volt, the base current will also increase. Okay, the base current here will also increase. And when the base current increase, okay, from here we learn that the collector current will also increase. Eh? How about if the base current is too high? Okay, let's say the base current increase to 1 ampere. If the base current increase to 1 ampere, then the current here will be 50 ampere. And this is very, very high currents. And this current may burn the transistor. Now, to avoid this happens, we must... Uh, make sure that the base currents will not exceed certain amount. Let's say it, it does not exceed uh, 0 0.2 ampere. It does not exceed 0 0.2 ampere. Uh, to control this, then we put a resistor. Okay, we put the resistor. So this resistor is to reduce the base current. Yeah, to reduce the base current so that the base current won't be too high. So that the collector current also won't be too high and uh, burn the transistor. So that's the reason we need to have a resistor here. That is to reduce the base current. Eh? Okay, reduce the base current so that the transistor is not burned even when the potential difference across R2 is very high. So the answer is uh, first to limit the current flow in the base and hence prevents the current in the collector become too high. This is to avoid the transistor destroyed by the high current.